Hello, it's Pastor Mark Junkin again. You're supposed to have read and done your lesson uh, for 327 for March 27th, and now we'll go through the answers. Um, so we're looking at Luke 9, um, the story of the transfiguration, and we're starting up on the mountain. Peter, James, and John stunned there. They want to build houses so they can stay in the presence of Jesus and uh, Moses and Elijah and then the events which occur. Let's talk about question one. Before what happened here, before the transfiguration, did Jesus amaze people with his appearance? Well, Isaiah makes this clear. It says that in his visage there is nothing to be desired. Now Jesus was an ordinary man. He walked among people and got dirty. He was also simultaneously God, but he didn't show that to the world. He kept that hidden in his humiliation. Occasionally, it would come out um, in service of God's plans and God's designs, but Jesus limited himself. And so because he was going to live uh, in our place so he could die in our place, he was just an ordinary man most of the time. Was Jesus always God when he was with the disciples? Yes, Jesus never stopped being God. The manhood was assumed into the godhood, is how we put it in, in our dogmatics texts. So Jesus never stopped being God. He just limited himself and acted according to God's plan um, so that he could, could walk in our place. Number three, why does Jesus' glory stun Peter, James, and John? Well, because they're mortals and they're sinners. And when you come into the presence of God as a sinner, um, you, you should die. But Jesus protects them from death. And in fact, in his uh, resurrection, which he does give to them before and after, in his resurrection, he makes us so that we can come into God's presence and live. And so they're stunned at the, the, this point due to the fact that they are still mortal, but they're protected due to the fact that Jesus will and has given them eternal life. Number four, are Moses and Elijah with Jesus in physical bodies? The answer is yes. Moses died and was buried, but then the devil and the archangel Michael fought over his body, as we learn from Jude, and then God took Moses' body into heaven. Elijah went up to heaven in the fiery chariot um, after he gave Elisha his mantle. So both of them were there physically with Jesus. Legally, what does Moses represent? Well, legally, Moses represents the law as it's presented in the Old Testament. He's the one who brought down the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. And so he brought the Decalogue, the law, and we didn't live up to it, but Jesus did. And so evidentiary, the evidence here is that Jesus, by living his 30, 33 years of life and by going through the temptations of the devil, um, lived according to the law despite everything. And so Jesus is worthy. Now we go to Elijah. Elijah represents all the prophecies. And God made a lot of promises in the Old Testament. He said that certain things would happen, that a Messiah would come, that is an anointed one, and he would come and he would save us from death, sin, and the devil. So Elijah testifies to the fact that Jesus has fulfilled all the prophecies. He represents all those that God used to say the things that would happen so that we and, and those of the past could be saved. Number seven, what is God's verdict about Jesus? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. His verdict is that Jesus did fulfill everything according to the law, that Satan's accusations against Jesus don't work, and so Jesus is perfect. And so when Jesus goes to the cross and dies, that perfection can be given to us. Finally, why does Jesus have his three witnesses wait to report this event until after Jesus rises from the dead? Well, this is because of God's plan. God's plan was not that Jesus would die on that day, but that he would die on Good Friday. And God's plan was not that everyone would witness uh, Jesus' glory on that day, but that everyone would witness Jesus' glory on the last day. 
And his plan was that the, the great sign that Jesus tells the truth that we are saved is Jesus' resurrection. So the witnesses are told to wait until Jesus rises so that that great sign might be given. And uh, so God's plan might be fulfilled according to the way he designed it. And then after Jesus rises, the disciples are able to say, now called the apostles, that they had basically been at the trial of Jesus up there on that mountain of transfiguration. And they saw that Jesus was worthy, both as God, so he was worthy to die for all the world, and as a man, because he completed the law and he completed all prophecies, he was worthy to save us. Thank you.